This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So it's the weekend. I usually like to do some kind of small project that takes under a half hour. And in this video, we're going to have this this application where we can look up state capitals and some other information using a JSON file. Okay, and the, and the reason I thought of this project is because someone asked me, how do I bring in JSON data from a JSON file into my basically into my my JavaScript application so I can display it in the HTML. So I just decided to take it a step further, create a little autocomplete application and um, use things like the fetch API, some high order array methods, uh, sync await, some of that, some of the modern JavaScript syntax. All right. So basically we can just type something in here. I have no idea why portfolio shows there, but ignore that. And let's go ahead and type in M. And you can see we get all the states that start with M. If I put an A in here, it will narrow it down more. So we're going to use a little bit of regular expressions to do this. And it shows us the capital. It shows us the latitude and longitude, the abbreviation. If I do S, it's going to narrow it down to Massachusetts. And we can also do it by abbreviation. So if I do MD for Maryland, you'll see that that shows up. All right. And when we clear it out, everything goes away. Now, this is based off of this JSON file, which I'll put a link to this just in the description. It's just an array of objects that have the state name, the abbreviation, capital, latitude and longitude. Now, one thing I want to mention is since we're using the fetch API, you have to have some kind of server that you're running this on. I'm using VS Code's live server extension, but you could use anything. If you use if you open it up in the file like I have here, If I open up my dev tools and I try to search for something, we're going to get an error that says that the fetch API cannot load file. You have to use, uh, you know, URL scheme must be HTTP. So you need some kind of server. If you're using VS Code, I would suggest a uh, live server. All right, so that's it, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close that up and jump into VS Code. I just have an empty folder called state capital search. So I'm just going to create my very simple file structure here. We're going to have an index HTML. We're going to have a CSS folder. We're going to have a JS folder and I'm going to have a data folder for my JSON. All right. So inside data, let's create a file called states.json and you can get this this um, gist in the des description of this video. And I'm just going to copy the array here and paste that in. Save it, close it, and we shouldn't have to touch that again for the CSS. I'm using a boot swatch theme. So boot swatch is just they're just custom bootstrap files to make it look a little different. So I'm actually using cyborg. So if I download that, I'll go ahead and bring that in to my CSS folder. Okay. Uh, and that should do it uh, in the JS. We're going to create a file called main.js. All right. And that's it for the file structure. So let me just close that up. So in our HTML, we're going to start here and it's very simple. Not a lot at all. We're going to put some boilerplate in here using Emmet and let's link our style sheet. So this is going to be CSS slash bootstrap min CSS. And then for the title, I'll just say state capital lookup. And then I'm also using font awesome for the little flag icon. So let me just grab that real quick. So we'll grab the link here and put it right above our CSS. Okay, so we'll save that and then I'm going to open this with live server so you can install it through the extensions uh, icon here and then you can just go open with live server and it should open up on 5500. Actually, mine opens on 5501. All right, so let's continue on with the body of the HTML, which is actually very simple. So we're going to have a container, a container class and also MT5, which is margin top five. It'll move it down. And then within the container, we're going to have a row. Then we're going to have a call dash MD6 so a six column div. I want it in the middle. So I'll use M auto here, which is margin auto. These are just bootstrap classes. And in here we're going to have an H3. I'm going to give it a class of text center and then give it a class of margin bottom three. And we're just going to say state K 
capital lookup, and then I'm going to put the icon right before it. So let's do I class of FAS and it's FA dash flag dash USA. All right, so I save that. Why is that? Oh, I put a dash here. Okay, so there we go. Now we want to put the input. So I'm going to go under the H3, put a form. Uh, let's do form group class. And in here, let's put an input. And I'm going to give this a class of form dash control and form dash control dash LG, which will make it a little bigger. Okay, and we'll give this an ID of search because we have to grab onto this in the JavaScript. And then let's give it a placeholder. And we'll say enter state or or it's like enter state name or abbreviation. All right, save that good. And then the last thing we want is underneath the form group, we need a place for the the, the data to show up. So I'm going to have an ID of match dash list. Okay, and then the very last thing is just a link to our script. So let's do script source and JS slash main JS. Okay, so that's it for the HTML. Very simple. We'll go ahead and close that up and now we'll jump into the JavaScript. All right, so usually the first thing that I'd like to do at the top is grab any DOM elements that I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, grab our search. So let's say document and I'm going to use get element by D you can use query selector also yeah, let's grab search and then we also want the uh, match list because that's where our data is going to be output so let's say match list all right now we're going to need an event every time we type in this input box we need to fire off an event to that calls a function so let's take search and let's add an event listener And you could use key up, key down. There's a bunch of, of events you could use. I'm just going to use input, which is just any input. And let's say in here we want to put an arrow function and I'm going to call I'm going to call another function called search states and I'm going to pass in search. But we need the value since it's a, a text box or an input box. So we need search dot value. Otherwise, it just gives us the element. Let's close this up. All right. Now, there's a few ways you could do this. If you wanted to call this directly, I mean, you could do like just put in search states like that, and then you could use search dot value with inside that. But I want to pass in the actual value as a as an argument here. All right. So I'm going to do it this way. You could also use a regular function if you don't want to use an arrow function. So and same goes for the rest of the code. If you want to do something different, that's fine. There's there's a thousand ways to write this application. So let's create a function here. So this will search the states dot Jason and filter and filter it. That's what it's going to do. So we'll create a function. I'm going to use an arrow function. So I'll say search states and it's going to take in what I want to call search text. Okay. now I'm using the fetch API, which returns a promise and I use the sync await when I'm dealing with promises, so we need to label this a sync. Okay, this function. And since it's an arrow function, we need to put it right before the, the parameter. And let's get our data from states.json with the fetch API. So I'm going to create a, a variable called res for the response, and we want to await for the promise to finish when we run fetch. And the The location is going to be up one level into data and then states dot Jason. So same thing as if you were hitting some kind of um, uh, API with a URL. We're just using a file location. Now with the fetch API, we don't get the data right away. We have to tell it that we want this to be Jason. So let's do const and I'm just going to call this states because that's what it's going to give us is the array of states. But you could call it data or anything else. And then we have to do another await and then just do res dot Jason. Okay, and that will give us the states and we'll go ahead and let's do a console log just so you can see that. Okay, so I'll open up my dev tools uh, console here and just type in M and it's going to give me everything. Okay, it's going to give me all the states 
because we haven't done any kind of filtering or anything like that. Um, so it'll give us everything. So for the person that asked how you can bring in JSON data, you can just simply use the fetch API. That's one way to do it. Uh, now we want to filter through this and we want to match whatever we type in here. So we're going to use a simple reg regular expression for that. So let's get rid of the console log and I'll put a comment here. We'll say get match or get matches to current text input. So it should change every time we type something. And I'm going to use let here and you'll see why in a second. But I'm going to say matches equals states and we want to filter through. So we're going to use the the filter method, which is a high order array method. So it's similar to how map and find and all those other methods work. It'll loop through. And what it does is it returns an array based on a condition or multiple conditions. So inside here, this takes a function. So I'm going to use an arrow function. I'm going to say for each state. Now I want to create a regular expression to match. So I'm going to call this regex or regex. And I'm going to say new regular expression. So reg exp. Uh, and then in here is the expression we want to match. And I'm keeping this very simple. I'm going to put some back ticks in here and I'm going to say it has to start with. So the ca uh, carrot, I think this is called, means it has to start with and then whatever the, the search text is. So we can put in the search text variable. All right, that's it. That's all I want to match is the, the, the beginning. Make sure you put this character in. Otherwise, it'll match any M, whether it starts with it or it's in the middle or end or whatever. And then as a second parameter, I'm just going to add the G, the global and um, uh, case insensitive flags here so that it matches whether it's a it's an uppercase M or a lowercase M. So very simple expression. And then we want to basically return an array that matches those. So we can do that by saying return. And not only do I want to do it on the name, but I also want to do it on the abbreviation. So we're going to say where it matches the state dot name. And we can do that by using match and then put in our regular expression. And then we want to do an or state dot abbreviation dot match. So we want to match either one. Okay, and that that should give us the correct matches. So down here, let's do a console log of matches and see what we get. So if I go ahead and type in an M, notice that we get only eight results and it's going to match whatever we type in. If we do MA, it'll narrow it down. You can see we get another array of three. And if I do MAS, it will narrow it down to just one. All right. Now, notice if I go ahead and clear this up completely, we get all 50 states. All right. We want to prevent that from happening. So I'm just going to put a simple conditional here and say if the search text. So if the input box, if the length is equal to zero, meaning there's nothing in it, then I want the matches variable to just be an empty array. So I want to clear everything out. So now if I do M a and then I clear it out, you'll see that it just it's just an empty array. Okay, so that's what I want to do there. So we have the logic of filtering through the data to match our input, but we want to be able to output it in the HTML. So I'm going to create a function called output HTML and we're going to pass in our matches. All right. So let's create that function here. We'll say show results in HTML. So we'll say const output HTML. That's going to take in the matches and then we're going to have our function body. All right, so first thing I'll do is just make sure that there are are some matches and it's not empty. So we'll say matches dot length is greater than zero. And then I'm going to do this. I actually I was doing a little bit of research and, and I saw this on, I think, Stack Overflow. And I, and I never did this before to output the HTML. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm going to use map. And I'm actually going to put the HTML inside of an, an array. So we're actually going to map through the matches array. And then f what's going to come out is an array of HTML. And then we can simply use join to turn it into a string. And I never done this before, but I actually like it. So let's do matches dot map. So this will map through and map just returns an array 
from an array. So in here we'll say for each match, I want to return uh, an array of these strings with these back ticks. I'm using back ticks because I'll be using uh, variables with inside. So let's do a div here and we just want to format this. So I'm going to use a card bootstrap card. So card and card body just gives it a border and some padding and stuff. Unfortunately, I can't use Emmet within here. All right, so within the card, let's put actually one more class I want here is an MB4 margin bottom just to push push the next one down. All right, and then in here, let's do an H4. God, I hate not using Emmet. So an H4 and we're going to have the the state name first. So let's put in our variable syntax and we'll say match.name. And then right next to it in parentheses, I'm going to put the abbreviation. So match dot a B B R. OK, and then next to that, I'm going to put a span with the class. I keep wanting to write class name because I've been dealing with react so much lately. Uh, so in here we want to put a class of text primary, which will change the color of the text. And in here we'll put the capital. OK, well, actually, let's make sure we close that span. So the capital, so match dot capital. All right. Now, under the H4, I just want to put the latitude and longitude inside of a small tag. Okay, so in here, let's say lat. And we can get that with our match dot lat. And I'll just put a slash and then launch. And we'll get that with match dot launch. Okay, so this will give us an array of these HTML strings and I can show you that real quick if we go right below the HTML variable and we console log HTML and I go ahead and type in M. You can see that this is actually an array. Okay, so we have eight matches and it's an array of HTML strings. Now I want to turn this into a, an actual string so we can just use the join method. So at the end of this, at the end of the map, let's do dot join and then just put in an empty set of um, uh, what are these quotes. And now if I do M, you can see we just get pure, just a, a pure string of, of just HTML and we can put this into our um, into our DOM. All right. So the last thing we need to do is just take the match list. And we want to say dot inner HTML. We want to set that to the HTML. So now if I go ahead and I put an M in. Oh, wait, did I spell primary wrong since this is on a different line. I can't. So span class text dash primary. There we go. I wanted the text blue here. All right. So that's working. Now let's type in a. Okay, so that narrows it down. Now we have one issue left, and that is when I clear this, it all stays there. Okay, and that the reason for that is because up here, yes, we change we turn the matches array back to just an empty array. Uh, once this is cleared, however, the HTML is still there. It's not the, the HTML isn't going to magically go away just because this array cleared. So we have to go in here and we have to say we want match list dot in our HTML to be nothing. We want that to clear up. Okay, so now if I go and I clear it, all the HTML goes away. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. And keep in mind, you can do this with any any JSON file, any kind of data you want. There's a ton of data out there, so I would suggest taking a look at it, um, searching for uh, things you're interested in and creating a little application, a little search application or whatever it might be. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like and I'll see you next time.